Hello and welcome back to the quest for pace. Today I'd like to discuss a few lessons learned during the final phase of my preparation for my sub 3 hour marathon run. Based on these lessons learned I'd like to give you a few tips that might help you to achieve your personal goals. The lessons learned are closely connected so I will first give you an overview of the lessons learned and then discuss each lesson learned individually. The first lesson learned is to incorporate some race oriented training sessions early on in your training block. The second lesson learned is to accept failures because failures will happen. The last lesson learned is to train and use your mind because your mind is the most powerful thing that will help you to achieve all your personal goals. Okay, let's start with the first lesson learned, incorporate some race oriented training sessions early on in the training block. I did not do such a thing. My first race oriented training run took place four weeks before my sub three hour marathon run. This was really too late because closely connected to the second lesson learned except failures, it resulted in some failures and this in the end resulted in a lot of mental stress because I was constantly thinking about all those failures and yeah, it was, it was not, not a good time because I was constantly thinking and um, doubting myself what if this happens again during your real marathon run, what if this happens again, what if that happens again, so yeah, this was not great. And so the most important thing here is to start doing those race oriented training sessions early on because they will provide you with a lot of information, they will help you to learn so much more about yourself and when you do this early on, you can learn from all the things that happen during those race-oriented training sessions and avoid things that might lead to some bad training sessions. You can maybe improve a few things here and there. You can prepare yourself in a better way. All of those things you can do if you start doing this early on. I, as just said, did this way too late and so this resulted in a lot of stress and a lot of learning during the final phase of the preparation for this sub three hour marathon run and this is not good. This is really bad because during this final phase you really want to make sure that everything is ready, that everything is working flawlessly and not to start learning new things. So what happened during those last few training sessions? Well, four weeks before the sub three hour marathon run, I started to take some nutrition during the runs. So I started to take some gels and not being used to take some gels, this resulted in some stomach issues. So this was not so much fun. And um, yeah, this resulted in some exhaustion. Well, exhaustion, I mean, I did a 36 kilometer long run at race pace it's not a surprise that I was a little bit tired toward the end of the run, but I think I would have been not that tired if I would have started to use gels early on in my training phase, to use some gels during long runs that my body gets used to it. Then maybe this training run where I really thought, okay, this is the training run where I can really practice everything, where I can make sure that everything is working as intended resulted in somewhat of a failure. This is really what I meant with except failures. Failures will happen and you just have to accept that things will go wrong and you have to then start thinking and analyzing those failures and try to come up with some solutions to it. As said with the issue that I started to use gels way too late in my training program, okay, from this point on, I used the opportunity to take in gels with every longest run so that my body started to get used to it. In the end, it worked without any issues, but I would have preferred if I would have been ready by the time as I really started to do those race-oriented long runs where I just wanted to make sure that, okay, everything, everything is really working as intended. Okay, was, was bad, it happened. I first was really doubting myself, oh, man, can I really do this? Can I really do the sub three hour marathon run? 
But yeah, I started then to analyze the failure. I uh, started to work against it. I tried to find a solution. And this was important. This was very important because failures are the best ways that help you to improve. You just have to accept them that things will go wrong and then you can learn based on your failures. Another failure that happened was that I had some issues with the digestive system at some point during those uh, race-oriented training sessions because I ate a few things prior to these runs that I maybe should have not eaten and so I got really careful, especially in preparation for the sub-3 hour marathon run to not eat those things. In the end it would have been better if I would have done those experiments and those uh, race-oriented training sessions early on because then this topic was on my mind all the time until I finally did the sub-3 hour marathon run. I was constantly asking myself what if I get again some issues with my digestive system doing the real sub-3 hour marathon run attempt, what if I need another bathroom break? This would be devastating, this would be really, really bad. So yeah, I really started then to think about, okay, what uh, kind of food I should eat before the run, what kind of food I should not eat before the run. It would have been so much better and less mentally stressful if I would have done those training sessions early on. But okay, another lesson learned, another failure accepted, pretty good. Another failure, Actually, it was not a failure, but it was a good lesson learned, and this is closely connected to the final lesson learned, train your mind. I noticed that with these race-oriented long runs, I was all the time running the exact distance I had planned for that run. So, for instance, with the 36 km long run at race pace, I was planning to do a 36 km long run at race pace, I had in my mind, if things are really going well, if everything is feeling great, I might extend that run and go for the full distance, but this is a thing that is not really working with your mind. You have to set your mind on that goal and there should be no other way than to finish what you want to achieve. If you do this like, okay, I want to run 36 kilometers and maybe I do those 42.2 kilometers then this will lead to the result that you will end at 36 kilometers because you have this first more easy goal and at this point things will get really prob uh, problematic. There I had another issue because I thought at kilometer 36, okay, things are still okay-ish. I do have some uh, bad feeling in my stomach because I started using gels for the very first time, but I'm still feeling all right. Let's see if I can maybe complete the top three hour marathon today. Kilometer 37, I had a somewhat slower um, split and this then confused me completely. So on the one hand, my mind was set on running 36 kilometers and then I even felt lost because I thought, okay, with that split, I can never ever complete a sub three hour marathon run and then I started to analyze the issue. Okay, what can I do against this? And my solution was I need to really see what splits I can run when I am at kilometer 32, 35 and so on to stay under the three hour mark. For this I even created some kind of table as you can see here. So I created uh, several tables that um, basically provided me with the splits I can run at um, each kilometer, um, each of the last kilometers based on a certain average pace. So I did this for a 4 minute 13 average pace, I did this for a 4 minute 14 average pace and um, just in case that I feel really good also for a 4 minute and 10 um, split average pace for the time until I reach a spot where I all of a sudden cannot keep up with that pace. So I really created some kind of schedule where I knew, okay, if I am at kilometer 36 and if I would have had until kilometer 36 an average pace of 413, then I can finish all the remaining kilometers with a split of 432. And uh, this was the thing that really helped me to know where I am during my run. I 
did not use that list. I had this list in the backpack my friend used to supply me with some gels and some water during the run and I instructed her if I really need that list please read out the times, read out the, the splits that I know where I am because uh, at this point I, I don't want it to know or I, I want it to be on the safe side that I know okay I can still make it and so I gave her the list. I even saw some other approaches of other runners that basically noted down some uh, key times on their forearm or so that they all the time can just look at their forearm to know am I still in time, am I too slow, am I in the right time because it gets so complicated to know all those things when you're really getting toward the end of the race and uh, yeah this, this was another lesson learned from the fact that okay uh, when I feel lost, when I'm not entirely sure where I am with respect to my uh, race strategy then I need to find a solution how I can do this and I decided to go for this list that I gave to my friend. I could have also, as just said, noted some times on the forearm or do whatever. I, you, you, you really have to be creative, you have to analyze your failure when, when you know that okay this went wrong, this confused me, what can I do against it? This also leads me to the last point, your mind is the most powerful thing. You really have to think and you or, or almost meditate on your goals. For me it started uh, during the last week before the, the marathon run that I always was thinking about you are going to run 42.2 kilometers. There's no other way. Once you start running you will not stop before you have not completed those 42.2 kilometers. And this is so important because, as just said with the training runs, when I had the idea, okay, I want to run 30 kilometers, then I ran for 30 kilometers. And at this point, I got tired, although I know, um, okay, I could have gone way further. My body can handle this without any issue, but the mind, the mind was really in control. And this is so important that you are aware of that fact, that you have to really know, okay, I have to really accept, I have to really set my goals, I have to mentally um, prepare myself for what I, whatever I want to achieve, this has to be your goal and nothing else should be there in your mind, nothing else. There should never be, okay, if this is not working out, then I can stop early, if this is not working out, then I do this or whatever. No, when you are at the, the start line, there's nothing else than finishing what you want to achieve. You really have to use your mind, you really have to say, okay, there's no way around. This is the goal and this is also very important with train and use your mind. Don't get distracted by other people. It's so easy to talk to other people, it's even more easy to talk to people that are not into long distance running and they can't really understand what it means to run a long distance and to uh, really stay mentally strong and then you maybe even hear some yeah in, if it's not working out you can use it as a good training run yes of course I could use it as a good training run but if I start the run with this mindset then I am more or less bound to fail so in this case use your mind your mind is so powerful this is so important I noticed it uh, really during this marathon run uh, we did this analysis of the splits and I did not slow down at all. I did not slow down at all until I crossed that finish line or well this artificial finish line there was no, no real finish line but yeah I set my mind on I have to run this distance and there's nothing else I can do until I have crossed this threshold. So yeah be ready and also use all the training sessions you had before to stay mentally strong. I knew at this point, okay, I did 30 kilometers at race pace, I did 36 kilometers at race pace, I did 32 kilometers at race pace. I knew that I can run at race pace for a very long time and that there's basically nothing that can stop me if I am just mentally strong, if I just know, okay, do this. And use, use your training runs to um, yeah, stay mentally strong. This is also bringing us back to the first lesson learned. Incorporate race-oriented training sessions early on because then you have already 
figured things out, you have already done all the failures, you have already learned from all those failures and the final race oriented training runs are then really to make sure that everything is running flawlessly and this will then help you even more to stay mentally strong because you know you get so much positive feedback from those runs where you know okay I can run at this pace uh, that it should be absolutely no issue just do it in an early time then accept failures don't get distracted by failures see failures as an opportunity to learn failures are necessary so failures are really necessary i mean if i would not have had those failures i might have encountered those issues during the real sub three hour marathon run attempt and then it would have really resulted in just an attempt and not in a real run so yeah accept failures because they are necessary they are absolutely necessary to learn to grow to improve yourself and don't get distracted don't get disappointed if a failure happens but see it see it really as an opportunity to learn see it as something to grow on to analyze it and to make things better the next time and all of this then will lead to the point that you can stay mentally strong that you have to set your mind really on the goal if you set your mind on the goal and there's no other way if you don't give your mind any other um, way out then to finish what you have started then you will really achieve your goals and with that i'd like to thank you for watching as always and also as always stay motivated stay running see you